Hi guys, welcome to Kerbal Space Program with Nitro. This is part one of an in-depth tutorial video series that I'm going to be doing about Kerbal Space Program for all the new users out there who got the game. Hopefully my tutorial will help you a little bit more than some others will. I'm going to try to explain as much as I can over the UI, shipbuilding, I'm going to do a docking tutorial, intercepts, landings, all kinds of stuff. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to go over all the different parts and bases and stuff, and then the system controls for when you're inside the vehicle hangars and just everything you can do on Planet Kerbin at the Space Center. So starting off over here on the left-hand side, you have your astronaut complex. When you click on that, it kind of works how you have people that apply to be a part of your space program and they have these stats, courage and stupidity. Well, right now these stats don't do anything more than just change their facial expressions when your ship is blowing apart around you. Uh, ones that are more stupid will tend to be uh, more happy, I guess, when things are going bad. And the ones that are more courageous will look a little bit more worried, so... That's about all this does right now. Under the Available tab on the right, you have all of your astronauts that are currently available. To hire an astronaut, go over here on the left and then just click the green checkbox. Now this guy is available for our next mission. These three are going to be the only ones that are going to be available for the first mission. Once they're already up in space, you need to hire more astronauts in order to have more available for future missions. The Assign tab is going to be the ones that are going to be currently assigned to in-flight spacecraft, but we don't have any of those right now. The Loss tab is everyone who dies on your missions. They'll get recorded here. Next we have the Space Plane Hangar. So in the space plane hangar, you can build space planes, but not only that, you can also build rockets if you so choose and launch them out on the launch pad. To start, you just have to click over here on the pods menu to select your starting pod, and then click on something else to attach it to build your plane out. There's a bunch of different tabs up here on the top that you can select from. Each tab has roughly two pages click on the little arrows on the bottom to change the next page. Now the space plane hangar works differently with symmetry than the vehicle assembly building. In the space plane hangar, when you want to do an object with symmetry, it'll only work for uh, dual symmetry. So right here I have single symmetry, and you can see it's not duplicating it on any side. When I click on the symmetry node down here to change it to double symmetry, it puts two on either side. This is the maximum amount of symmetry for the space plane hangar. This is so you can build wings on space planes evenly. In the vehicle assembly building, it's a little harder to build planes because it tends to flip the object that's being duplicated upside down. The second tab down here is your angle snap. This adjusts how the different parts will interact with your object. Right now it moves around very freely, and then when I turn angle snap on, it snaps. I usually use angle snap for the placement of everything, just so I can make sure I have perfect symmetry on all of my objects. The space plane hanger is also where you're primarily going to be using these bottom three tabs. These turn on your center of mass, center of lift, and center of thrust. So just to show you what these tabs do, I'm going to go ahead and put a rocket and some wings on this craft. So now when I click this tab, under center of mass, you can see where the center of mass of your object is. Under center of lift, you can see where your center of lift is, and you can only see that once you have wings on an object, otherwise it has no lift. Click center of thrust, and that shows you the center of thrust for your entire object. You always want your center of mass to be perfectly in the center. You don't want your center of mass to be off-center, otherwise your craft won't handle very well. 
you always want center of lift to be either right on your center of mass or just barely slightly in front of your center of mass if you're building space planes, otherwise your plane won't handle very well. And you always want your center of thrust to be behind your center of mass when you're building planes. But I'll go over that in a separate tutorial about space plane building. Up here on the top you have your parts, action groups, and crew tab. I haven't really used the crew tab once, but you can select your different crew that you want to be assigned to this craft. If you build a craft with multiple pods on it, like this one has, you can select another crew member to become a part of that secondary pod, otherwise when it launches you'll start with the default one crew member. You can remove and add as many crew members as you have available seats on your craft. Or you can click down here the fill, clear, and reset buttons to go back. You can also hire more astronauts directly from the astronaut complex with this tab. Action groups is used to assign uh, specific actions to different parts of your craft. I find this most useful when doing it for engine shutdown and engine action stages. All of these stage, gear, light, RCS are already assigned to hotkeys on your keyboard. To assign custom hotkeys, I usually use the custom tab. If you really want to, you can assign stuff under the abort and brakes if there's nothing already there. Custom 1 through 10 is going to be numbers 1 through 0 on the top of your keyboard. Hit it and it'll activate the action. So for custom 1, click on the part that you want the action group to be assigned to. I usually use this for engines, so I want this to be an engine shutdown. Custom 2 would be activate engine. You can assign as many parts as you want to to individual action groups and it will perform that action group whenever you press that key. Hit reset to reset any actions that you did. Back in the parts tab is your just basic vehicle assembly parts. Alright, let's go to the vehicle complex. So the center building your vehicle assembly building. This is where you're going to be building the majority of your rockets. To start out, select a pod from the left hand side, and now you can see that the symmetry mode is different in here. You can have up to eight times symmetry on your craft. And here, all the tabs work pretty much the same as what I already explained in the space plane hangar. You can load and save anything that you created up here. All the controls for moving around are all the same on your mouse. Use right click to rotate around the screen. Use your middle mouse button to zoom in and out, and then your scroll wheel to move up and down. Whenever you click on the pod that you started with, it's going to move the entire craft. If you ever want to put something at an angle, like say this plate here, it's going to start out perfectly horizontal like this. To change the angle of it, use W, A, S, and D on your keyboard. Use E and Q to rotate it, but you can't really see it that well with this. There you go. If you want to put things at uh, five degree angles, let's say if you wanted to build a ring or something at an angle. Align the part on the part that you want to connect with, and then hold down shift and use W, A, S, and D to rotate it in five degree increments. Holding shift will use five degree increment rotation for any part that you have. Down here on the bottom right is the 
Mission Control Building. It's not currently in use, but that'll be used in a future update. Up here is the launch pad where you launch all of your spacecraft. And over here we have the tracking station. In the tracking station, you can keep track of everything that you currently have going on in your universe. Up here on the top tabs, you have debris, probe, rover, lander, ship, stations, bases, EVAs, and flags. Click on any of these and you'll see all of the available items that are there over here on the left hand side of your screen. Click on them and you'll see they're periapsis and apolapsis if they're in orbit, and you can get a readout on what those are in real time. If you want to fly a craft that's currently under any of these tabs, hit the fly button on the bottom. This is a satellite I put in orbit around Kerbin. Up here on the top left, you have your time warp. Select individual arrows up here in order to warp through time at the specified amount. Be careful when using this. On the bottom center, you have your nav ball. This controls the rotation of your craft. Use W, A, S, and D, Q, and E to rotate the vehicle. Use T and R to activate RCS and ACS control systems. You have your degrees of rotation on the nav ball displayed down here. As I move, you can see it change. On the top, you have your speed. This is used differently depending on what situation you're in. While you're on the surface, you'll have a surface speed. In orbit, you have an orbit speed. And then when you're doing intercepts, you'll have a target speed. Over here on the right, you have your G-force meter. Try not to let G-forces get too out of control when you're launching your spacecraft, otherwise certain parts may not be able to withstand the pressure. Over here on the left hand side you have your throttle. You shift and control to move the throttle up and down. Over here on the far left you have your staging that's available. You use a space bar to activate individual stages. Down here you have your pitch, roll, and yaw, but you don't really need to keep track of those as you can see everything that's happening to your craft on the nav ball. Over here you have your staging, docking, and orbital map. You can use this to select individual control systems. Select docking when you're moving in for docking moves and use your orbital map if you want to. Otherwise you can hit M on your keyboard and it does the same thing. Lights, turn on the lights of your craft. Gears will cycle through different gears and brakes is primarily used for space planes. The abort tab doesn't do anything unless you have an action assigned to it. Up here you also have your atmospheric reading. This tells you how much atmosphere you're currently in. We're well out of the atmosphere here at 125,000 meters because the atmosphere of Kerbin ends at 70,000 meters. The resources tab over here shows the amount of resources you have available on your craft. Since this is just a little probe, all I have is electric charge and xeon gas. When you're in your orbital map view, over here on the right, you'll see information about the craft that you have and the crew currently in it. Since this is a satellite, it doesn't have any crew. To go back to the control station, just hit escape on your keyboard and select Space Center. Back in the tracking station, whenever you launch a craft and you still have debris left on the ground, or in orbit, or on another planet even, you can select debris and then you'll have an option to either recover the debris or terminate the debris down here on the bottom left. That way you can clean up any debris you may have left behind from any of your launches and you don't have to worry about orbital debris floating around. 
When you plant flags on other planets, you can select them, and then you can go to that individual flag and fly it. So here's a flag I put on the moon. This is in Jupiter Crater. You can see your flags at any time from the Space Center, but you can't really do much more with them than this. A couple last things to go over here in the Space Center. You can terminate anything that you currently have out in orbit or on the ground by hitting the red X down here to terminate. This deletes the craft and kills all crew in it if the craft is manned. Uh, you can also use the orbital map view to get information on different planets. Double click on something and it takes you to it. Then you can see the information about it. This is useful whenever you want to plan missions to other planets. You can see over here the escape velocity required to get out of its orbit and all the other uh, information about it. This is also useful for planets that have atmosphere because it will tell you your atmospheric height right here is 50,000 meters. So that tells us that as long as we're above 50,000 meters in orbit, we won't be in the planet's atmosphere. Well, that's it for the UI tutorial. The next tutorial is going to go over shipbuilding, what to look for in your rockets, and hopefully I can help you guys solve some problems that you might be having if you can't get a rocket off the ground or if you're having issues getting into orbit. See you guys next time.